So we're doing proof by induction, but this time we're going to do something called divisibility proofs. Uh, the best way to do this is to show you an example. So prove that m cubed minus n is divisible by 3 for all n is greater than 1. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, whatever value of n I put in here, 5, 7, 23, 23 cubed minus 23. I don't know what that number is, but according to this, it's going to be divisible by 3. I could put a million in there, and I'd also get something that is divisible by 3. And that's what we're trying to prove. So we follow the same thing that we did for partial sums here. First we do a basis step. And the basis step is just showing that it works for the first value in the series. What's the first value in the series? n is greater than 1. So in this instance, and this is the first time I've done this, the basis step isn't n is equal to 1. The basis step is the proposition where n is equal to 2, because this only works for things greater than 1. All right, so let's just put it in here now, and we can say that uh, 2 cubed minus 2 is equal to uh, 8 minus 2, which is equal to 6. Now, I'm just going to go one step further here, and I'm going to express 6 as 3 times 2. Uh, and then I can say, right, that's divisible by 3. Now, the reason I've done that here is because if something's divisible by 3, it can always be expressed as 3 times something. And so this is the first big thing about divisibility proofs. If A is divisible by M, then A can be expressed as M times N, whatever the thing it's divisible by. In this case, if 6 is divisible by uh, 3, it can be expressed as 3 times 2. All right, so now we do our inductive step. So as before, the first step of the inductive step is to assume it's true for PK. So how can we kind of write that? Well, we can say that k cubed minus k is equal to, or can be expressed as, 3 times m, where m is some integer, right? Okay, um, now the next step of our inductive step is to show that if that's true, it's also true for k plus 1. Okay, so we're going to show that it's true for k plus 1, and I'm going to do a little bit of a left-hand side, right-hand side thing again. Now, most maths teachers don't do it uh, exactly this way. They kind of ignore the left-hand side, right-hand side, but there is a left-hand side, right-hand side. So, let's do it. Uh, we're going to sub k plus 1 into here. So, we're going to say uh, k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1 and then we're going to say it's equal to, now I'm going to choose a letter here, 3q. Now, this is what is required to prove. We need to prove that this is true, that k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1 is equal to 3q, can be expressed as 3q, where q is just some, some number. And this is going to be my left-hand side, and this is going to be my right-hand side. So here's my left-hand side, k plus 1 cubed minus k plus 1. Here is my right-hand side, 3q. We're always working on the left-hand side when it comes to divisibility proofs. Okay, so divisibility proofs always get worse before they get better. Okay, They get uglier before they get neater. So that k plus 1 cubed, I'm going to expand that. k plus 1 times k plus 1 times k plus 1. That's going to be ugly. Uh, and then just leave that negative k plus 1. All right, so I've got this. This bit here comes from this bit here, and I have that negative k should be minus 1 there. All right, minus k, minus 1. All right, so the plus 1 and the negative 1 cancel out, so I've got no more constants left. I've got these k's left. Now, I'm going to write them in an order that might look unusual, uh, but it's going to make sense in a second. I'm going to move that negative k here, and then I'm going to do the rest of it. So plus 3k squared plus 3k. And you might be looking at it and saying, well, but hang on, why didn't you simplify? Why didn't you put the negative k and the 3k together? But that's because I'm looking just one step ahead. The goal, when you're moving through this left-hand side, is to find a place to place this. In the same way that in partial sums, you're always trying to place, in the very first step, you're always placing what you know. In this case, I know that k cubed minus k can be expressed as 3m. So, 
Here, I have k cubed minus k. So I'm going to now express that bit as 3m plus 3k squared plus 3k. You might see it. 3m, 3k squared, plus 3k. We can factorise. And that's what we get. 3 times m plus k squared plus k. And the very important thing to know here is that m plus k squared plus k is an integer. It's a whole number. Because m is a whole number from here. 3 times a whole number is equal to this. We were saying it's uh, divisible by 3. And k is also a whole number because it's some unknown integer in, in our list. Uh, now, if that is just an integer, we can replace it with another integer. What integer should I replace it with? Uh, therefore, left-hand side equals 3q. Left-hand side equals right-hand side. Now, in these class, and the reason most maths teachers don't sort of use a right-hand side in these is because the right-hand side doesn't really ever require any manipulation. You're just looking at the right-hand side saying, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for 3 times something, or 7 times something, or whatever the divisibility proof is. You're working down that left-hand side. You're looking for this golden opportunity here to put something in that you know, and then you work down until you can factorize it so that the divisibility thing, the thing you're trying to divide by, is outside of that factor, which leads you to this nice little thing here. Now, of course, you need your little proof by induction statement. If the proposition k is true, p k plus 1 is true, p 2 is true, that was our strange basis step there, therefore p n is true for n is greater than 1, and we have proven it. We're going to do another divisibility proof that um, sort of does that step in a slightly different way. All right, so we're going to do example two now. Uh, now I've kept some of the words here because the steps are kind of the same. Uh, this question says prove that 2 to the 4n plus 3, 2 to the 4n plus 1 plus 3 is divisible by 5. So this uh, vertical line there is just another way of saying is divisible by. 4n is greater than or equal to 1. So no trick here with the basis step, n is greater than or equal to 1. So the first thing we should test is that this works for 1. All right, so let's try it. 2 to the 4 times 1 plus 1 plus 3 equals. Now, uh, 2 to the 5 plus 3, and that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 35. And 35 is divisible by 5. Uh, so that checks out. I'll just write it as 5 times 7. Okay, so we know that it's true for P1. Now, let's assume that it's true for PK. So let's assume that uh, 2 to the 4K plus 1 plus 3 can be expressed as... Um, let's use the letter M again, so 5M. This is divisible by 5. And that's, as you saw in the previous example, is going to be important because we're going to look for a way to shove it into our K plus 1. Okay, now, required to prove. Required to prove that it's also true for K plus 1. So let's try K plus 1. We're going to say 2, 4, bracket, K plus 1 bracket, plus 1, plus 3, can be written as, uh, let's use Q again, so let's say 5Q. And again, this is going to be my left-hand side, and this is going to be my right-hand side. So, left-hand side over here, right-hand side over there, we'll leave that alone. We come over to here. Now, I've already done one step, I've already done some expanding, because the left-hand side can be written as 2 to the 4K, plus 4, plus 1, plus 3. Now, we, we, we need to be able to put that in, into there somehow, right? Now, the trick with these ones is to realize that actually maybe, maybe this bit might be useful. So I'm just going to rewrite this again as 2 to the 4k plus 1 equals uh, 5m minus 3. That kind of gives me an alternative thing that I could put into this formula. So... 
I'm going to use my index laws to understand that, well, actually, this could be written in a different way. It could be written as 2 to the 4k plus 1 times 2 to the 4. So what we're doing is breaking our indices into two things, because our first index law would say that if we're multiplying these two things with the same bases, then we're adding their powers. So I've done like the reverse of the first index law. And then we have a nice little plus 3 on the end. So, now what? 2 to the 4k plus 1, 2 to the 4k plus 1. I can substitute 5m minus 3 here. So, I can say that that's 5m minus 3. I'm taking that and multiplying it by 2 to the 4, which is 16. Now, it would probably be more polite to put the 16 here. 16 times 5m minus 3 plus 3. Okay, where to from here? Well, I can expand some brackets, see what pops out there. That's going to be 80m minus 48 plus 3. These come together, so I can now say that that's just move up here, make myself some more space. Uh, 80m minus 45. And keeping in mind that I'm always looking for divisibility of 5, we can see a common factor of 16m minus 9. 5 times something, I could rewrite that, couldn't I? Because we know that m was an integer from up here, so that whole thing is also an integer of some sort. So I can rewrite it as 5q, where q is an integer. Left hand side, 5q, right hand side, 5q, tick, tick, and then I can write out that whole statement at the end again. If pk is true, pk plus 1 is true. We know that p1 is true, therefore pn is true for n is greater than or equal to 1. All right, uh, that is proof by induction, divisibility proofs.